Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. So today I'm going to be doing a book haul for you guys. I haven't done a book haul since the beginning of August and I've acquired a number of books since then. Um, I've gone on a couple of trips. I've got like book of the month books. There's other things. I've just been to bookstores in general. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to just show off the number of books that I have here. I'm going to try to provide some context to them, but I can't always do that because one, I don't know the synopsis to all of these books, but there will be links to all these books down in the description below. And two, I've acquired these so long ago. And some of these I've already talked about, so I'll probably move the, through those faster. So yeah, let's jump right in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the, what month are we in? November. <laughs> book of the month books um, that they sent over. Book of the month sends me three of their five picks every month and so I'm going to show you which three I got this month. So the first one is The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. Alice Hoffman is probably best well known for writing the book Practical Magic. I've never read anything by Alice Hoffman so I have no idea whether or not I'm going to like this one but it sounds interesting. I believe it takes place in like the 1960s in New York City and all of them have some sort of like magical things going on in them like it follows a family um, and I believe that like everyone in the family has something sort of magical going on with them but I think the kids may not potentially know what exactly is going on. The other one that I got is Artemis by Andy Weir. Uh, this is one that's obviously going to get a lot of attention because Andy Weir is best obviously well known for writing The Martian which was his debut um, and was made into a movie. A lot of people really enjoyed it including me. I've been hearing relatively like mixed things about this one. Some people really enjoy it, some people don't. So I'm excited to try this one out myself. This one I've heard is basically like a heist that takes place on the moon and that's all I know about it. That's all I want to know about it. If you read this one don't tell me anything because I don't want to know anything. I want to go into this one as blind as possible so that way I'm not like as influenced by outside forces as much as I can. And the one that I'm the most excited about is Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. Kristen Ritter is an actress. She's probably best well known for playing Jessica Jones on the Marvel's Netflix series. But yeah, I've been hearing really good things about this one. This one is a mystery thriller type book. And yeah, I'm excited to read it because again, I know a lot of people at Book Riot got like advanced copies of this one and really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to jump into this one myself. All right, next up, I have Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. This is a book that I got when I saw him <laughs> live. Not like just hanging out or anything, but I saw him and Hank uh, perform here in the Chicagoland area. And so obviously we got copies of the book along with like our tickets. Seeing him live was fantastic. Him and Hank just obviously have such a great rapport with each other and they just had a lot of fun. It was really silly and ridiculous, but also very like poignant and honest, which I believe just sums them up. A lot of people were commenting on my last video asking me if I'm going to read Turtles all the way down. So obviously, yes, I am. I don't know exactly when I'm going to do it. I'm hoping to do it before the end of the year, but no guarantees because I don't really make TBRs. But I think that this one would potentially be a good one to do during the month of November if I need a break from all the nonfiction that I'm reading. If you want my sort of like pre opinions on it, I feel like all John Green books kind of had the same thing going for them. So if you like one, you'll like the rest of them. If you don't like one or if you've read all of his other ones, you kind of have a pretty good vibe of what John Green's writing's like. So I feel like you kind of already know where you're going to land with John Green books. Like they're not very surprising at this point. Yeah, we'll see how I feel about this one. I've been hearing pretty good things about it. Like I feel like the people who like John Green like this book, which is all I really need. In the beginning of October or like mid-October, I ended up going down to Atlanta. Um, and so obviously I went to some bookstores, picked up a couple books there. Uh, the first one that I have is Riverine by Angela Palm. I talked about this one in my nonfiction November uh, video, but this is a nonfiction book. It's a memoir um, that follows this woman who grew up in a small town in Indian Indiana, um, moved away for some reason, and for some reason ends up having to move back home or like reckon with her home for some reason. Yeah, like I said, I don't know like a lot about these books going into them. I kind of just like to explore them how they are. But this is one that I've heard really, really good things about. And it's uh, published by Grey Wolf Press, who puts out some really great nonfiction. So yeah, excited for this one. Hoping to get to that this one specifically in November for nonfiction November. Another one that I got while I was down in Atlanta in the exact same bookstore was The Unquiet Dead by Asma Zayanat Khan. Um, this is one that I've already read. I've read, I think there's three books in this mystery series so far, and I love them so, so much. Um, I'm going to link to my review of this one up in the cards because I think it's a fantastic mystery book. If you haven't read it already, I highly recommend it. In this story, you're following this detective named Asa Katak, who is a Muslim man. It takes place in Canada and he works as a detective and sort of like a liaison between like the Muslim community and the police 
officers in the area and there is this murder that happens that he ends up getting involved with uh, because it might be linked to this uh, massacre that happened in the 90s which is a real thing that happened so yeah I highly recommend this book again I'm gonna link to my book review of this one I definitely recommend picking up these books if you get the opportunity okay two other books that I got in Atlanta at a different bookstore um, are the two three dark Crown Kender Blake books. I love these books, but I always got them as uh, e-arcs, so I never owned the physical copies of them. And so part of me was like, oh, I'll wait for the paperback versions of this to come out and acquire them that way because I like paperback better. But it looks like they're not going to be releasing <laughs> these in paperback because Three Dark Crowns has been out for over a year and there's no signs of a paperback edition being released anytime soon. At least that I'm aware of. But this way I now have all of them like together as a set and when the other books in the series come out I will have them. I really love these and I'm very excited that I have them and I believe that they're both signed. Yeah they're both signed because they were just signed in the bookstore that I picked them up in. All right and then the final one I picked up while in Atlanta, yes I bought a lot of books while I was in Atlanta, is Devil in the Grove by Gilbert King which I talked about in my October wrap-up. I love this book. It's one of my favorite books I've read all year. Um, I'll link to my wrap-up so you guys can check that out if you're interested in more information. This is a non-fiction book about a case that Thurgood Marshall worked on. It's so good. Like if I was going to recommend any non-fiction book to people this is definitely like on my list of like anyone even if you don't like nonfiction, would like this book. All right to keep going on this train of books I picked up while out of town I went to Madison in August and I picked up two books while there because I went to two different bookstores. The first one is We Gonna Be Alright Notes on Race and Resegregation by Jeff Chang. Um, this is a fantastic book. I've already done a full review on it. I gave it a five out of five stars. It's an essay collection about race and resegregation cannot recommend this enough. This like spoke to my soul and it was fantastic. And then the other one that I picked up was A Decline in Profits by Solari Gentile. This is a mystery book and I picked it up because you know the name sounds potentially not white and then <laughs> I picked it up and I found out that she wasn't. So that was exciting. But yeah this is like historical fiction mystery. It takes place on an ocean liner in like the 1930s uh, and it's like sort of this upper class of people and I think like a murder happens on the boat. So that sort of situation happening here. So two books that I picked Picked up at a used bookstore here in Chicago. Uh, well, first one is Ragtime by E.L. Doctorow. I know nothing about this book other than it's historical fiction that takes place in New York City around like the First World War I believe and then it was made into a musical but I know that a lot of people really enjoy this one and you know it's pretty well known I believe but it's sort of like one of those underrated modern classics I think. So yeah I saw this one at a used bookstore for like a dollar and I decided to pick it up. At that same bookstore I saw a copy of Beloved by Toni Morrison because I still need to read this one. Technically I have to read Tar Baby first because I'm reading through Toni Morrison's books in publication order. So I'm currently at Tar Baby and I still need to read that one but Beloved is next after that so I decided to just pick it up while I was there because how often do you come across Toni Morrison at a used bookstore. This final set of books that I have are all books that were sent to me by various publishers. Uh, the first one I have is Dark Chapter by Winnie M. Lee. This is a mystery thriller suspense. I'm not sure which of the three that it technically falls into. That's inspired by true events and it follows this Taiwanese American tourist who like lives on her own in London. Um, she's very like adventurous and like has no problem sort of like exploring the city on her own. And then you're also following this like 15 year old Irish teenage boy and something like tragic happens that like brings both of their lives to a head sort of thing. Like I think at the beginning of the book something horrific happens and then you sort of like go through and you see what led to the events that led them to where they are. Next I have The Delusion by Laura Gallier. Um, this is one that I mentioned in my Autumn Readathon TBR which I didn't end up reading. This one I believe is sort of like a psychological suspense book sort of situation. Um, you're following this kid named Owen who is in high school. Like 11 kids from his high school end up committing suicide and I believe that it's sort of this investigation of like what's going on with these kids and at the school and things like that. Yeah I'm very interested to see how this one turns out. One of my friends or like book ride friends uh, works at Tyndale Publishing and so she contacted me to uh, see if I was interested in it and it sounds interesting so we'll see. I should feel like I should read this like now because it's really like cold and rainy and a little bit creepy out so maybe this one will get rid sooner rather than later but we'll see. Okay and then I have The Midnight Dance by Nikki Katz. This one was sent to me by Swoon Reads. Um, this is a young adult book that follows a someone in a ballet. Honestly I don't know that much about this book but I'm always attracted to books that feature dancers and specifically ballet so I, I'm kind of okay with not knowing anything else about it to be honest. 
All right, and then I have two more books from the same publisher. Uh, the first one is We Are the End by Gonzalo C. Garcia. Um, as you can see, this arc doesn't even have like a cover, so they stuck like this postcard on it, so that way you could see like what it is. This book takes place in Chile. Apparently, you're following this character named Tomas, who's uh, is a game designer, and his girlfriend left him to Antarctica, and he spends just all of his life sort of hiding under his desk as his life is falling apart. Yeah, it just sounds really interesting. This one came from Galley Beggar Press, uh, which I believe is a UK publisher. And then the other one is We Are That Young by Preeti Taneja. Oh, I probably totally butchered that one. I apologize. I know that this one takes place in India and it says that it's a modern day King Lear. That's about all I got. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I don't have that much information about it, but yeah, like I said, I don't know that much about these books before I go into them, but again, the publisher approached me and I was like, yeah, I need more books in translation and books published in other countries or from authors from other countries. So yeah, I decided to just go for it. So yeah, that's everything that I have for you guys. Feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you have read any of these books um, or if you have any questions about any of these books, definitely leave that down in the comments as well. I'll have links to everything down in the description so you guys can check them out if you're interested. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.